begin this meeting. Thank everyone for coming. I'm um, really glad the rain clouds held on for a little bit so we can make it in here nice and dry. Looks like it's going to be an ebullient meeting, which by the way. Oh. So, first up, <clears throat> would anyone like to read our mission statement? Nasir. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self confidence and personal growth. Thank you, Nasir. With that, I'd like to. With that, I'd like to hand it off to Tyler, our president. Alright, so this meeting is a very exciting meeting. This is the first meeting of the year where a lot of the big roles are being uh, presented from our new members and new guests. So Nadia, it'll be your first time as Toastmaster of the day. Kaylee will be your first time as Table Topics Master of the day. <laughs> and then we have new speakers and new evaluators, so it's a pretty exciting meeting. So without further ado, Nadia, Toastmaster of the day. <laughs> excited to be Toastmaster. Um, um, we're going to have two speeches today. Um, they're both icebreakers and first we have, no. oh first we have to have our all counter. All, oh my god. All counter. <laughs> ben. Yes. Okay. So I'm counting the number of filler words and phrases like ah, um, all those different ones and I will count your number number of times you do it, and then whichever one is most common for you. So, okay, thank go. you, Ben. <laughs> Next we have our grammarian, Isaac. Um, I'll be measuring your syntax, run on sentences, and um, any big mess-ups. <laughs> <laughs> perspectives, but I always get confused about what I want. Smile and be proud of accomplishments, of progress. Don't put yourself down or it can only get worse. Make light of the situation, but why does it always feel forced? Ladies and gentlemen, this was my first journal, journal entry in the journal my mom gave me at the beginning of the school year. It's also my only one. And I wrote it yesterday at the stroke of midnight, right after my first ever regatta, my rowing competition. This was the time that I made so many mistakes on the water. I felt personally that I hindered my team from making the top three. I kept thinking throughout it, all the practices, all the techniques I learned, they were going through my mind, but my body was not following. Side note, if you don't know what rowing is, there's a boat on the water, and there are around eight people in that boat, and they each have an oar and they use their entire body to move the oar and the water with it in order to push the boat and race other boats. And there's technique that goes with it. There's focus that you have to be able to focus on that technique, and there's power. And I kept messing up. There's this technique called fettering. Every time you take the oar out of the water, you're supposed to make it flat 
and right before it gets in the water, you make it back to a square so you can push the water away. And the way you do it, you're supposed to twist your oar. But I kept overextending and twisting it. And when you do that, you catch a crab. And I don't mean Sebastian from Little Mermaid. That's not what I mean. This is when the blade wants to like get stuck in the current of the water. And you have to use your entire strength to get it out of that water. And it's a struggle because everyone else in front of you and behind you is rowing and you're the only one struggling to get back in the sequence. And then there's a, a girl up there, a very short girl. Um, she's the coxswain and she's the, one, she's the one able to steer the boat. She's the one telling us what to do. We're actually, if, if you, you, it's better if you see it, we're actually rowing backwards from our perspective. So she's looking and she knows where we're going. So she's telling us what we need to do, who's supposed to row, how much power um, starboard's port left, right should be doing. And she'll, she's telling us how to fix our techniques. And she would be calling on me and be like, hey, uh, seat three, make sure your oar is not too deep. Hey, seat three, make sure you push with your feet. Hey, seat three, do this. And I kept thinking, okay, I got you, I'm gonna do this. I kept thinking, you can do this, focus. And then I kept making mistakes. I was like, no, dang it! And it felt like it was only me because I kept getting overwhelmed. It's like, dang it, I can do this, focus. And there were moments where we were all in sleep sync and I was like, yes, we're doing this. Dang it, made a mistake. You can do it. Focus. Grab. Ugh. Everyone has to slow down in order for me to get myself together and get that crab out and get back in the sequence. And that only slowed us down. After the race, I tried to stay positive. I tried to smile, but I kept feeling a little antsy, like we could have done so much better if I hadn't kept, if I didn't keep messing up. But everyone around me was smiling, supportive, no one was judging me, everyone was like, hey, you got this, this was your first race, don't worry, you'll do better next time. But that feeling of discouragement kept pulling me down. Then came back my coach. He got us together. He had the biggest smile ever. He, he even gave me a little fist bump, which was very cute, by the way. I was just like, thanks, man. Made me feel, feel happy. Then I remembered my mistakes. Discouragement. We got last place that day. My boat, specifically. Discouragement. And then I saw one of our novice boats win third place. I saw one of our varsity women boats win third place. They were smiling, happy. I was happy for them. I got excited. And for like the longest, I was so happy until I got home and thought, dang it, I made a mistake. Actually plural mistakes. And then I wrote this journal. First line, you can do it. Focus. I try to be positive. I always feel overwhelmed by my mistakes. As I said, I kept letting my mistakes take me over. I try to look at different perspectives. I try to stay positive, but it kept coming back, that discouragement. But when I saw the smiles in everyone's faces, I kept feeling happy. I kept feeling infuriant. <laughs> girl once told me, one of my closest rowers told me that this one day 
is so ins insignificant compared to what your future holds. What you do in your future is a reflection of what you learn from your mistakes. <clears throat> Happiness can't be without sadness. They don't last forever alone. You can do it. Focus. Focus on the happy moments, but don't forget those sad moments so you can learn from them. I haven't made a journal entry today, but if I were to, my first line would be, you can do it. Focus. Thank you, Adana. Um, that was really great, very motivational. Our next speech is by Lisa Perez, also an ice bear. Thank you, Lisa. Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Nadia, for that introduction. So I'm a freshman here at UGA. And when you enter college, there's so many opportunities available to you. And there's huge moments that can make or break it here. But opportunity, it can also come from the, small, from the small things. It's in there with the people that you surround yourself with, and it's in there with the decisions you make every day. So my UGA story, my UGA narrative, if you will, it doesn't even begin with me. It began over the summer with a classmate from high school asking, hey, is anyone going to dog camp? I didn't know what it was, so after a quick Google search, found out it was an extended orientation program, or basically a way for first years and transfer students to become acclimated and getting used to the transition here at UGA. And I didn't know what it was, so I applied, made it, eventually got accepted. And there was one time in the middle of the weekend where I went to go fill my water bottle. It's a hot August day, and you can imagine you need to keep yourself hydrated. And there's another girl at the water fountain, and she's also filling up her water bottle. And so we started talking, exchanging our names. Her name was Tiffany. She was a really brilliant person, very cheerful in her energy. And we were able to talk about what our experience is like so far in that weekend. And that was the only, the only single conversation we had that weekend. Another person I met at UGA was when I volunteered for Movement Day. And you can imagine a bunch of first years and their families trying to figure out how to move all their stuff into the dorms. It's a hot, sunny day. And you, it's, a, it's a recipe for a lot of cranky interactions. And in that kind of environment, you can really bond with your fellow volunteers. And one of the girls I met, her name is Abigail. She was volunteering for, that, for, for Movement Day as well. And turns out she was the first year who was going to be living in the same dorm as me. And so with Tiffany and Abigail, we'd see each other around campus, you know, recognize the face, kind of like wave or make that head, and I was like, oh, what's up? <laughs> but besides Toastmasters, one of the organizations I joined was SGA, or Student Government Association. And I talked about it with a friend. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to join but they had a first year program called Forum and it was centered around community service, which was one of my passions throughout high school. So I applied, did the interview, ultimately got accepted, and as full circle as it is, both Tiffany and Abigail, we were all in the same small group. What a coincidence. Which brings me to this moment right here, talking with you about this experience. And Jessica's not here, but I have heard to thank her for giving me that nudge to come here and uh, give a speech for, t for tonight's meeting. And I'll be honest, when, when she volunteered me <laughs> and I felt that my heart tightening in my chest with that fear and anxiety, I had zero clue what I wanted to share with you all tonight. But it was that adrenaline rush that pushed me to say yes and accept the challenge into giving this speech tonight. And for that, I wanted to thank her, imaginary Jessica, wherever you are, for pushing me to do that. And so, with opportunity, we can wait for it to be, we can wait for fate or something to happen to us. 
or a favorable junction of circumstances. But we can also go and do something about it. Taking that leap of courage to go beyond your comfort zone and saying yes to that small amount of fear because we don't know what's going to happen. Opportunities, they come, they knock once or twice, and they might never show up again. My roommate, she had the opportunity to have a dog growing up. And this weekend, um, she needed to go home because she found out that her dog was sick. The vets, they were optimistic that the dog would survive, but I just found out that, unfortunately, he passed away. So we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I believe that each person, every single one of us here, can take that small leap of courage, whether that's saying hello to a familiar face, or trying out a new activity, or joining a, an organization and saying yes to giving a speech. But in, in that opportunity, when you find yourself with that hesitation, I challenge you to take a deep breath, count one, two, three, and figuratively take that leap of courage. Now, this morning I had the, I ran into that very same person from high school who asked about dog camp. And knowing that I was going to be giving this speech today, I took that leap of courage, I went up to her and thanked her for just that small mention about dog camp. I mean, to her it might have seemed inconsequential at that time, but to me it led me to a whole new, uh, to a lot of opportunities and just meeting new people and a way of life here at UGA that didn't know existed. So Monday, y'all, there's a week full of opportunities ahead of us. Take that leap of courage. Thank you. So thank you, Trisha, for that speech opportunity and a little bit of courage. Um, you guys can take this time to fill out your ballots. I know for me it's also really hard to take a step forward and do something new. Usually I'm also pretty unprepared for things like, I don't know, Topics Master or Hostmaster as well. Sometimes you can't even get the name right. But you gotta try your best. Um, and next we have <coughs> Topics Master Haley Syrian. Can I like well, turn Of course. Of course. <laughs> um, I joined this club myself because um, Oh yeah, were the speakers in time? Yes. Um, Alana needed like four seconds to be in time. <laughs> but um, but you were. <laughs> There's some timer error. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hers was extended, so I think it'll be okay. <laughs> no, like she did it. No, we'll let that one slide since it was supposed to be four or six anyway, so it was even longer. So. Great icebreaker anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay, um, next we have our Table Talks Master for impromptu speeches, Haley Syrian. All right, guys, so you yourselves were the inspiration for this week's topics. Um, and then you said, you could do words, you're a linguistics person. So you guys are getting words. <laughs> <laughs> so what I have gathered are a series of words that relate to or are feelings. Your job will be to compose a speech surrounding those feelings. You can talk about the feeling the definition. You can talk about your experience with that feeling. You can really do anything. I'm only giving you one word to work on. Have fun. <laughs> All right. But I will be nice and I will give you the feeling before I call on you so you can compose in your head very rapidly before you see if you're the one who's going to be doing the talking. Who can I not call on? There are a list of people who I can't call on. I can't call on you, can't call on you, or you, or you. Goodness gracious, we're just going to go down the line. I mean, usually we, we avoid people that have roles, but at this point, yeah, you can basically call anyone at this point. All right, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> All right, so our first word is ecstasy. Go for it. Obligatory. <laughs> 
sort of handshake. Fine. Now you can put Fiona. That's close enough. Fiona. Fiona. Just like the U2 singer. We'll do it. Yeah. Awesome. Please don't her. I'm sorry? Please don't her. The what? <laughs> well, this is about feelings and ecstasy <laughs> instead of the drug. Maybe another time. Okay, starting time. Ecstasy. I would say that feeling was really inside of me when I was like 300 pounds and I sh removed all of that over the past four years when I went down from 300 to like 175. I think with that, I, I used to carry like, when, when I was 300 pounds, it made everything hard, whether it was walking, running, I couldn't really run, I had to just not eat exactly what I wanted to while trying to lose that. I didn't have that ecstasy that you were talking about, but after losing the 125 pounds my freshman year of uh, college, uh, it made it a lot easier to do things that I wanted to, whether it's, again, running, walking, meeting with friends, not feeling that I didn't value myself because of that. I felt that I was able to fulfill whatever I wanted to, at least to the extent that I felt that I should, and I guess in that way I had a lot of ecstasy, and I see that it would also grant me even more ecstasy if I could make it to the 60 second mark, and it seems like it almost is, and thank you very much. <laughs> case of grief is, for me especially, is when I looked at my handout for the honor ceremony, and I was going through the list of all the names on this thing, and everyone submitted their nicknames, their, the names they like to be called, and it's written down on that slip, like at, or Alex or Alexander would be Alex, Jessica would be Jess, and I told them my name is Zachary. My nickname is Zach. And they spelled it Z-A-C-H. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Zach. I've never been Zach. And yet people, even though I asked them to spell it Z-A-C-K, consistently call me Zach. I say purposely Z-A-C-K because that can never be called Zach. <laughs> Nothing with a C or a C-H. And yet, Zach, Zach, Zach. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Now, people call me Zach Attack, and that's even worse. <laughs> because that's, no matter what, the number one nickname everyone calls me. Even, they, if, even if they don't know my name, they say, hey, Zach, you're, wait, your name's Zach, right? Zach Attack, man, you, you're my dude. And I'm like, dude, you're not even close. Uh, <laughs> but grief in my life is when people call me Zach. Thank you. <laughs> but I was made aware very recently through a friend <laughs> and this festival 
focuses on the pride of a certain group of people. Um, it is actually a very interesting um, topic that I'm sure you can all look into later on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe all words have a positive and negative meaning. So, negative, and also, positive and negative is only your perception. So, the lust of, say, a person, that could be negative to one person because they're indulging in that fact, overindulging in having relations with that person. And it could be positive to the other person because they want to overindulge. So, 